This is the Straight Truth Podcast, biblical answers to difficult questions from a Christian worldview. Pastor, I want to bring up a text that is confusing to many and and, and certainly challenging, as some texts are. Well, really more just a verse. Mm -hmm. So what does Jesus mean when he says, you must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect? This is from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew Mm -hmm. 5, 48. So I thought the whole point of the gospel is that we are not perfect, only Jesus right. is, and we need to be clothed in his righteousness. So how, how, do we, how do we take that? It seems like a command, you must be perfect. Yeah, I, I think those texts serve a twofold purpose depending upon who's hearing the statement. So our Lord in Sermon on the Mount, he's obviously aware that he has religious lost people in his circle of hearers. And so pointing to the standard that God requires, which is his own perfections. God himself is the standard for what he accepts, his own holiness. That text would serve to drive someone to see their need for the grace of God in salvation. So if if I'm lost and I hear that the standard of God is measured by his own perfections, I must be perfect as he is perfect, or I must be holy as he is holy, other Mm -hmm. texts say. I'm not that. And so I must be aware at that point of my sinfulness and my need for forgiveness and grace. And I must understand that salvation cannot be accomplished by my works because I cannot live up to that standard. If I'm a believer hearing that command, the standard hasn't changed and won't be lowered. So the standard for me as a believer is measured by God's own perfections, his own holiness, which is to say, that I am always striving along the road of progressive sanctification for something beyond what I've known. There's always room for growth in me. I can never say I have arrived in any realm of my life. So if I'm to be perfect as he is perfect and I think about loving my wife, that's what I'm striving for, to love her as Christ loved the church, for example, Ephesians 5. I'm to love her in a way that reflects the love of God. I can't congratulate myself in a way that would say, you know, she has the greatest husband on the face of the earth. I I just love her perfectly. I haven't loved her perfectly. So there's always room for growth in my life as I pursue Christ in any realm you want to talk about, in my thought life, in my attitudes, in my words, in my deeds, because God's standard never changes. And the standard that God accepts is his own which reminds me as a believer that I'm striving for that growth from the place of of total acceptance because that standard in my case has been met through the finished work of Jesus Christ. That is the very righteousness that I was gifted when I, when according to God's plan of salvation, when I received the the, the merits of God's own son on, on our behalf as sinners, knowing Christ lived for us, he died on the cross as a substitute for my sins, all my sins, was raised from the dead bodily, is alive forevermore, and and God's promise is that everyone who places his or her faith in his Son as Savior and Lord, God justifies them. He declares them right with himself and imputes to their spiritual account the gift of his own Son's perfect righteousness. So in Christ, I am perfect as my heavenly Father is perfect. Mm. In Christ, I am holy Mm. as God is holy in in that sense of of forensic holiness and righteousness. But in terms of now my growth as one who's been gifted that, that that still is the standard. And I'm always striving to grow into more and more of the image of my Savior. And one day I'm promised that I'll be glorified in God's presence and Mm. there'll be no more sin. Mm. I will be sinless one day in my experience, just as I am sinless in terms of God's sentence, I've been forgiven of all my sins, gifted Christ's righteousness, and one day his righteousness will be mine in my experience when he glorifies me in his own presence. Mm, that's great and, and very helpful. But, you know, Peter says something similar, and you already alluded to this, First Peter 1.15, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. For as it is written, you shall be holy for as I am holy. So the quote from Leviticus. And so he's not, not quite perfectionism uh, when Peter says this, but, um, but certainly we're being called to a holy standard, which is the standard of God himself. How can a believer 
be holy as the Lord is holy. Yeah, and that, and that makes clear, doesn't it, that the application for the believer is not just gratefulness for the gift of justification, mm -hmm. because he's talking about your conduct. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's why I think there's a twofold application to believers. One, my holiness and my perfection is found in Christ. Hallelujah. But now also there's the pathway for my growth mm -hmm. now that I'm in Christ. So we, we pursue holiness from the, from, from the place of acceptance, not for acceptance. We have acceptance in Christ Jesus completely accepted in the beloved. But now we're striving from that place of legal acceptance in our conduct, in our experience, to take on more and more of the, of the character, the holiness, the righteousness of our Savior. And God, God produces that in the lives of His people by His Spirit, with His Word, in a progressive way until one day He glorifies us in His own mm. presence. Mm. So I'm not yet what I will be but I'm not who I was, mm. and I'm becoming more and more of what Christ saved me to be. Mm. And that's the Christian experience. And this is what we call progressive, progressive sanctification. Progressive sanctification. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's helpful. And um, I know Peter says immediately after this, I don't have it in front of me, but to live out your faith at the time of your exile, it's almost as if we are exiles awaiting the return of Christ or waiting for heaven. And uh, in the meantime, we are to progressively be sanctified, being sanctified by the Lord himself and becoming more and more holy. So it's not a call to say, in this life, you are going to be absolutely per perfect. No. You are perfect in the clothing of Christ and what you have been clothed with, right. with his, with his perfect uh, life and blood. But, um, but as we sort of stumble and fall, we are nevertheless moving toward uh, the holiness of the Lord in the time of our exile. Absolutely, and this truth, is a great gift to us because it, it constantly, continually argues for our humility. I mean, there, there's, there's no way I can look honestly at my conduct and say that I'm perfect as mm -hmm. my Heavenly Father is mm -hmm. perfect or holy mm -hmm. as my God is holy. And so the, who can ever argue, who, who knows the truth, that you're everything you should be? So there's, there's always an argument there in that truth for my humility. I'm not yet what I want to be. I'm not yet what I'm going to be. And so there's always room for me to grow in any area you want to talk about. I need to be more than I am, more of what Christ would be willing to make me. So Lord, help me yeah. to be that. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.